Hey everyone, welcome back to Fossil Frenzy, the series where we talk a specific fossil specimen, location, or in this case, a piece of paleontological news. This one is pretty big and definitely ends the year on a crazy note. The news we are discussing is a recent paper, Chimerism, a specimens referred to Sorphagonax maximus, reveals a new species of Allosaurus by Andy D. Dennison, Matthew J. Weddle, Daniel E. Berta, Holly N. Woodward, Holly M. Flora, Andrew H. Lee, and Eric Snively, which was recently published and discusses a new study of the Kenton Quarry material referred to Sorophaganax. This material, or three bones in particular, made up the holotype for Sorophaganax maximus. The paper argues that with their 2024 reevaluation of the material, that it is actually a chimera belonging to a sauropod or two and a large allosaurid, by their study, a new species of Allosaurus. Now, Sorophaganax being considered a large species of Allosaurus is nothing new, as it has been a hot debate since Smith described it as Allosaurus Maximus in 1998. Of course, the news of some of the material being from a sauropod is. Now, maybe we are getting ahead of ourselves, as some may be saying, whatever was Sorophaganax? So let's do some quick history catch-up. The material referred to Sorophaganax was originally excavated outside the Oklahoma town of Kenton in 1931 and 1932. The man behind the excavations was John Willis Stovall, a name that lovers of Acrocanthosaurus should recognize as he named it in 1950. He was also a professor at the University of Oklahoma. Stovall provided the name Sorophagus Maximus in 1941, unfortunately without describing the specimens in detail. And in 1953, the name Sorophagus for a large theropod was tossed out because the name Sorophagus was already in use by what is now known as the Great Kiskadi. So this became the first time the name related to the material came into question. In this case, a nomen nudum. Sorophaganax would come into use thanks to a formal description of the material by Daniel Chur in 1995. And like I had previously said, a study of the same material actually by Smith in 1998 would describe it as Allosaurus Maximus. Ever since then, it's been a hot debate with some saying it's Allosaurus while others are saying it's Sorophaganax. And that really kind of brings us up to 2024 where there was even some recent videos giving estimates for Sorophaganax up to 8 tons. And of course later in 2024, Literally a few months ago, an abstract unfortunately leaked and led some to completely write off Sorophaganax as a theropod and rather list it as a sauropod. If you have kept up with the channel, you probably have at least heard about this leak situation reference here or there, and at least with me saying please A, don't leak it, but also B, wait for the paper to get peer reviewed and published. Now that this has actually happened, it's published and I've read it. So I feel like I can actually talk about it. So what were the findings? Was Sorophaganax an allosaur, a sauropod, completely fake? Well, it's complicated. But for now, the authors argue that some of the material was from a sauropod and some was a new species of allosaurus. So let's dig into that. The holotype of Sorophaganax was described using three bones, a dorsal neural arch, atlas, and some tail vertebra known as chevrons. So when reevaluating these bones, what did the authors find? Let's start with the atlas, which the authors looked over and deducted that the atlas assigned to Sorophaganax lacks the facets for proatlas and anterolateral processes, but also has posterior ventrolateral processes, neuropophyses that don't roof over the neural canal paired vascular foramina on its ventral surface and anteroventral protrusions. So what does this all mean? Well in short the atlas possesses features more in line with sauropods i.e. chimerosaurus than theropods. Next let's look at the chevrons. The chevrons in shape differ from allosaurus and as the paper points out was once viewed as convergent evolution to tyrannosaurids who too developed these meat cleaver-esque chevrons. The paper concludes though that the chevrons referred to Sorophaganax bear craniochondral expansions that were used to distinguish it from Allosaurus but more typical to those seen in Diplodocids, even those recovered from the same exact site. So another bone and another type of sauropod. So this leaves the dorsal neural 
mural arch. And this one seems to be, of the three, the hardest one to place. Uh, the paper does say how some Cacardonosaurids possess accessory laminae, but so do Apatosaurus, including a specimen from the same quarry, and both have similar lateral fossae. Unfortunately, the specimen in particular is fragmentary, and its placement or serial position being unknown makes it hard to distinguish if it's a sauropod or a theropod. And since it cannot be confidently assigned, then other material, be it sauropod or theropod, cannot be confidently assigned to it, making sauropaganax a nomen dubium. So if sauropaganax is a nomen dubium, does that mean that the it's fake people were right? Well, no. See, it's complicated, like I said earlier in the video, and if you saw the thumbnail or the title of the paper, you know there's still a theropod species coming out. Yes, the name Sorphaganax may be a nomen dubium, and the three bones in the holotype are chimeric, but a large allosaurid was still present in the Kinton formation. The material used here to distinguish the new allosaurid species was a large allosaurid postorbital, also recovered from the Kinton formation. While it is similar enough to be considered an allosaurid, it does show some autopomorphies that distinguish it from both Allosaurus fragilis and Allosaurus gematsoni. The postorbital displays no rugos, ridge, cranial ornamentation, or boss on the anterolateral margin of the postorbital. Being that the material is diagnosably distinct from both fragilis and gematsoni, the authors described it as Allosaurus anax. Anax being Greek for king, thus the full name means different lizard king. I think it's really nice to see the homage to Sorophaganax, which too paid homage to the original name, Sorophagus. There were some other fossil specimens that were referred to Allosaurus anax as well, including cervical vertebra, postpectoral dorsal centra, and fibula. The authors also gave an estimated size of Allosaurus anax, which was between 3,700 and 4,600 kilograms, based on the femora circumference of the three likely to belong to it. Now this is heavier than Alsars fragilis by about 1500 kilograms and bigger than large specimens by nearly a thousand kilograms. It also is said to be heavier than the Acrocanthosaurus specimen known as Fran. So in all, yeah, Sorophaganax as a name may be a nomen dubium. And yeah, there was sauropod material mixed in, but a large allosaur still patrolled the environment just under a new name being Allosaurus Anax. And honestly, it's been kind of crazy to see the discourse online uh, just about the name, because the idea of a large Allosaur is still there, it's just a new name. Uh, but yeah, it's been almost as hot as the Nano Tyrannus T Rex, Juvenile T Rex debate. And it's just so odd to see people going out like celebrating the downfall of the name as if it were like a hated comic book character or something that was retconned out of existence you know and others just like saying oh it's all gone when it's still there it's just a different name you know yeah perhaps not at eight tons but still larger than any other allosaurus and at the end of the day it was always kind of just a large allosaurus just given a different name so next time you go into the sam noble museum in oklahoma city uh Dinosaur is still there. Uh, it's just going to be a, probably a different name now. I don't know. Uh, we'll see how that works. Obviously, the paper is super, super fresh coming out just a couple of days ago. And make sure to go check it out. It is a fantastic read. Uh, there's more in there as far as different specimens and just information regarding the whole study and so please go help support the authors it was a fantastic read make sure to go down in the description below i have linked it as well as i put a link to a blog where you can read from one of the authors of the paper matt weddle uh, just his thoughts and how the team came about it and was going back and forth and how yeah, there's four different outcomes that might come from this, yeah, you know, which I also thought was a great read. So make sure you go read those two. As far as like the name itself, yeah, it's a nomen dubium for now. If they were to find a complete specimen or a better preserved specimen that was definitively theropod or definitively sauropod from the formation there, 
uh, then they could maybe bring the name back. But yeah, for now, guys, the three bones, two leaned more to being sauropod, one was indeterminate, and so the name itself is a nomen dubium. But there is still that large Allosaurus wandering around the Morrison Formation. And uh, being at the top of the food chain here in North America, of course, it is still relatively small size of material for this specimen. And I'm interested to see if the thumb claw OMNH780 is also referred to Allosaurus anax or Allosaurus fragilis. We'll see what happens to that. I'm sure this probably won't be the last time we hear about this, uh, but it's not being received overly negative or anything like that uh, as far as the scientific community uh, so it seems like everyone's pretty happy with it but you know this is the fun part about science and paleontology and what we've always said is man there's always stuff to learn and we're always learning new stuff even about things that we thought we already knew so hey gives you guys something to look forward to go out there and uh, become paleontologists or scientists and go study because you guys will also be able to find really cool stuff and uh yeah that's where we end our episode today if you want to see more about the sam noble museum obviously we've been there there'll be a link as well in the description below or maybe a pop-up above and guys have a great holiday season uh this will probably be the last fossil frenzy of 2024 unless another paper drops and i know there's a couple big ones being talked about at the SVP um, but yeah for now probably the last one will be for 2024 but we will be back in 2025 doing more fossil specimens and hopefully some more on the location stories but until next time guys for more fossil frenzy episodes click that link to your left for more about us here at cools paranormal click that link to your right and don't forget to hit that like and give us a subscribe and let us know. A. Have you read the paper? What are your thoughts? And B. In 2025, is there a fossil specimen you want us to talk about? Tell us in the comments below.